Hey everybody, welcome to Tesla's in Canada. Now that this bad boy right here, the Cybertruck, has been released and they've made deliveries on it, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on it and tell you all of the cool details on this awesome truck. So the Cybertruck was released just a couple days ago and first deliveries were taken by I believe seven or eight different people on the live stream at least. Not sure if they're delivering any more this year as stated on their website, especially in the US, it says 2024 deliveries for the Cyber Beast, the top trim level, and then the dual motor is 2024 deliveries, and then the rear wheel drive version is 2025. Now, one thing to note for us here in Canada, if you're watching and you're Canadian, it looks like only the rear wheel drive is slated to come for 2025. There's no mention on Tesla's website under the Cybertruck of the dual motor or the Cyber Beast coming to Canada in 2024. I'm not sure what that means. We'll find out at a later date on what that means and if it's coming here to Canada or if it's not coming here. But the rear wheel drive is slated to land in Canada in 2025. There's a lot to note about the Cybertruck, but some of the things I don't really want to get into that are a bit too techy. I prefer to keep things more simplified on the channel. I can gloss over some of those details like 48 volt battery for the low voltage system, which is a huge upgrade. 12 volt has been the standard across the auto industry for like 70 years. And then it has an 800 volt fast charging. So that is gonna be able to be used at the V4 superchargers. And that's gonna provide 250 kilowatts of charging. And that is crazy speeds. You'll basically be able to go from 15% to 85% in about 15 minutes and be on your way. So that is incredible, especially if you're towing. And as you know, when you're towing, the range comes down quite a bit. So with that architecture being in the Cybertruck, it's going to be extremely beneficial for people that tow or just people that want to continue on their way quickly if you can find a V4 supercharger. Other interesting things to note, which I actually find kind of awesome, is the fact that it's pretty much bulletproof the whole outside. Um, they created their own stainless steel metal for the entire outside of the vehicle and they had to come up with a special way of bending the metal which the machine doesn't actually press on the metal. There's an air gap in between with high pressure air to bend it and they have to bend it past because it'll flex back into place. So I found that is pretty interesting and awesome to know that they're revolutionizing the auto industry with using a, a new type of metal using 48 volt uh, low voltage and yeah those are the major things it can tow really well accelerates extremely well it uh, in the live stream they showed it beating a 911 while towing a 911 as well <laughs> I really do like the look of the interior of it. I like the tonneau cover and how it covers the back window, which I know that's something that people may view as a negative, but owning a truck in the past, I had that back window covered a lot with a flip up tonneau cover and I didn't find it to be much of an issue. So without having that, it wasn't that big of a deal. You do have a camera on the back of the Tesla which is always displayed on the screen so you always see what's behind you when that tonneau cover is up. I don't know if when the tonneau cover is down if it doesn't allow you to see that screen automatically displayed on your screen so you have that visibility. Now some people say why wouldn't you just have a camera on the rear view mirror because that's another part the Tesla would have to put in and another part that could fail so keeping it all in that one screen and keeping your visual cues going down to the screen to see everything instead of looking up, looking out, looking everywhere, keeping everything in one place simplifies things. And this is something that if you haven't driven a Tesla, it seems a little bit difficult to comprehend. But once you've driven a Tesla for 
six months, a year, you find it really useful having everything there on the screen, easily accessible, having the speed, all your notifications, basically everything can be done on that screen. And in the Cybertruck, the screen is the biggest out of any Tesla screen. I believe it's around 18 and a half inches where the S and the X are around 17 inches, the screen size. So Cybertruck screen size is that much bigger and that much better. One thing I am interested to see is how the door handles work because there's no door handles on the car. It's just a touch button on the, on the side of the vehicle that then pushes the door out automatically and they say it could break through half an inch of ice but it'll be interesting to see how that actually works in the Canadian winters. I look forward to testing that and making videos on that when I get my Cybertruck in the future and I have some other friends that are ordering Cybertrucks as well so either way I'll make videos on the Cybertruck as soon as I physically can especially for us Canadians that want to know how it does here in the Canadian weather. Now let's get to some of the important figures. 547 kilometers of range with the dual motor and I around 515 kilometers of range with the Cyber Beast you can get an optional battery pack, which is around 16,000 US, and so 20, 25,000 Canadian. We'll see what the pricing's like for that. That goes into the bed, it's another battery pack, and it expands the range to over 700 kilometers, which would definitely be beneficial if you're towing, because your capacity will be affected anyway. So it will be interesting to see how many people opt for that option. Now it does take away a third of the bed and I'm pretty sure it's going to be around 400, 500 pounds. So it's not going to be easy to take in and out of the bed of the truck. And it's likely bolted in place and secured to transfer that battery power down into uh, the Cybertruck. So it'll be interesting to see how many people opt for that and how it does in the real, real world. It does tow over 11,000 pounds and you can have 2,500 pounds in the bed of the truck. Definitely can handle things well and it can tow even more than that probably, but to stay in their regulations, they have put 11,000 pounds on it. Can do 0 to 100 in 2.7 seconds. Now that is pretty crazy for a pickup truck. With the stainless steel that they've created, there's no paint, so there's no chips and they've made the pickup truck extremely durable on the outside because as you probably know paint on other pickup trucks gets scratched so easily when I went off-roading in mine I got all the paint all scratched up and yeah it's not fun when that happens but with the cyber truck it doesn't have paint it has a stainless steel exterior that's corrosion and rust proof and scratch proof and if you do get a dent on it or a mark well not a dent because you can't really dent it unless you're shooting at it but if you do get any of that you can buff it out and it'll look just like new now another thing to note is that the glass is shatter resistant you can throw a baseball at 112 kilometers an hour or class 4 hail which can be a concern here in Canada there is there has been more hail recently, especially in Ontario and Quebec. Yeah, so it's pretty much hail proof, baseball proof. That's the glass. So hopefully we'll see less glass chipping. There's some other things to note with it. It does have a rear screen for the passengers to watch movies, do climate controls, even move the front passenger seat. You can do that from the rear screen. It has a 15 speaker system with two subwoofers and I think two or three amplifiers. You can pretty much charge whatever you want with the truck. You can charge your phone, your laptop, you have a 20 amp outlet in the back and a 240 volt as well so you can charge many things and the truck does have bi-directional charging so you can use your cyber truck to charge your other Tesla if you need or with the new Tesla home chargers, they are going to allow you to power your home with your Cybertruck. 
So that is a huge, huge benefit. And another reason why I would actually opt to get a Cybertruck is to have that battery backup system for my entire house. And if your house has no power and the supercharger, say 20, 30, 40 kilometers away, is up and running, you can take your Cybertruck there, charge up, come back, and continue to power your house. Now, I think that can be extremely beneficial. Now, people will say, well, you could just get a gas generator, but how cool is it to use your own vehicle to power your house? What do you guys think? Are you going to buy the Cybertruck? Are you going to wait? I know the pricing right now is pretty high. I think here in Canada, it's going to start around $80,000 for the rear wheel drive and be upwards of 140000 for the Cyber Beast. So we'll see you once they announce the official Canadian pricing numbers and when the timelines are going to be for all that. But stay tuned to the channel and I will keep you updated. Check out some of my other videos on the Tesla Model Y and Model 3. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you for watching. And if you've been watching for a long time, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for subscribing and staying tuned on the channel. My name is David. Have an awesome day. Bye.